Hi folks, Scott here, founder and lead designer of Rogue Home Cinema. Very exciting, brand new products coming. It's an industry that thrives on new stuff. And actually, unlike the TV world, the projection world is very considered when it comes to an upgrade. Here today we have the new Sony XW series of laser projection systems. The very first one we've got our hands on. It's been on back order for ages. We've got a massive waiting list. So we're excited to finally see this new model, the XW5000 for real. Now, why is home cinema projection still so important? Well, going out to the movies was always about the big screen. And when we say big, we mean completely, totally immersive. That means we're looking for actually a 45 degree viewing angle wherever you're sitting. So if you're say three and a half meters or around 11 foot back from the screen, a 45 degree viewing angle means a screen about 2.9 meters wide that makes it around 130 inches of screen size to really feel that cinematic experience now as you may imagine despite tvs getting bigger and bigger they're still not at 130 inches for not less than 50 to 100 thousand dollars so projection is very much still required to feel that true cinema experience at home so that's a really big screen, about 1.6 meters high, or about five and a half foot high for a 130 inch screen. Now the issue of a big screen like that, you wonder what the problem is, is actually the center channel. It can get pushed really, really low. Uh, and if you've got multiple rows of seats, it could be a challenge. So the other advantage of a screen that big with projection is we can have the speakers orientate behind the screen and the sound project through the screen. Of course, that's an acoustic transparent material and still get a really great picture. It's a little bit of a dichotomy, though with the right technologies, you can truly have your cake and eat it too. That is where the dialogue on screen is happening, the vocal, the voice, the sound is completely aligned and that creates that real wow factor and that real depth into the movie. So what is the new XW series of Sony? Well, fundamentally, it is the laser projection light system. So this is something which the 7 series for Sony exclusively had last year, and it was over and upwards of around $25,000. This new XW5000 in Aussie dollars is sitting at $10,000. Absolute game changer, as many other brands aren't quite there yet. All new design goes beyond the laser light engine. It's a brand new chipset. Different from before, the previous chipset of 4K was at 4096 pixels across. This was the DCI standard for 4K or digital cinema, something which home cinemas don't really run. So Sony have switched it up this time around and going for the residential version of 4K, which is 3840 pixels across giving us the true ultra 4K resolution that we find on Apple TV, Netflix, and of course, ultra Blu-ray. So the lens for this unit is also all new, albeit a little bit smaller than the last series. So precise optics is really critical. So Sony's had the chance in this series with this whole new design to recreate a lens system which is gonna deliver the best sharpness and the best value. Now they've definitely been value driven in this model. To have the power output of 2000 lumens, laser power, something's got to give. Now the power from this unit is really quite extraordinary. We mentioned it was laser powered. The amount of brightness they've achieved is 2000 ANSI lumens of output. Now when Sony comes to mention specification and output, they're really on the money. There's no exaggerated terms. So this is truly a bit of a powerhouse given the $10,000 price tag. Now only about five, six years ago, we we're looking more like 11 to 1400 lumens. So we're almost double the output of projectors only a few seasons ago. With the new design also brings with it a brand new lens. Now the smaller chipset not being as wide as the previous, does give Sony the ability to build a more focused and smaller lens for the 38, 40 pixel wide rather than the massive almost 4.1 wide DCI chip. So with that, they can get away with a smaller lens, though 
the throw ratio is also reduced. So the maximum size screen you're going to get from this unit is going to be the lens to screen distance divided by 1.38, which is somewhat smaller than the previous series, which was closer to 1.3. So you're going to need a little bit more throw distance to get a given screen size with this particular unit. What that does mean, though, is they can focus on higher fine-tuned lenses, which are a little bit smaller. So the result you do get and the size that you have is pinpoint perfect. Color resolution is another whole thing. When we say color resolution, we're really talking about color range. How deep do the colors go? In Ultra HD, the color standard is actually the same as commercial cinema these days. And that's what we're chasing down. With this unit, we're looking around 90% of the DCI or P3 color scope. Now, Sony claim a little bit more, though reviews so far are showing more like the 85 to 90 range. We're still yet to do our reviews, so we'll find out more on that. One good thing about Sony's approach, though, is instead of having a color filter to saturate and create deeper colors, instead it's a, a wide open optical system. That is, there's no filter engaged at all to achieve or start to achieve the P3 color. So what does that mean? It means you've got the full 2000 lumens of brightness if you're running HD color or P3 color. These other units on the market, when they go for the DCI color filter, the light output is almost halved, which renders them on some larger screens not as impressive as just keeping it to the original older HD color standard. So I quite like how Sony's sort of created the compromise for us, extended the color as far as it can go without compromising light output. Compatible with HDR technology, although we're yet to see HDR plus become a feature. I say become as it does run the latest HDMI chipsets and it has the X1 Ultimate processor. This is a big processor, which means big software advanced upgrades can occur for this unit. So although some features may be missing on this unit now, potentially an update later on could see it grow and evolve to some of these features. Frame rates at 4K 60 Hertz with all the fruit, HDR, wide color space, every feature you could wish for. So for gamers that love the V-Ray and the color and the finer shadow resolution, you're going to get full capability of that. However, those that want to push high frame rate at 120 hertz, we yet to see the Sony actually capture that feature. For So for gamers, you want to check those specs and decide which unit's going to really be best for you there. Quiet projector is a good projector as a great home cinema is a quiet space. And some projectors, particularly on high light output mode become very noisy to the point where they're kind of unusable. And that's where a hush box system is required to quieten them down. Putting a projector in a box might be great for settling down the sound, but you do need airflow. So a hush box is a box that has air intake and an exhaust system. Something that you can do DIY pretty easily actually, and it's absolutely worth it for keeping the room as quiet as possible. The Sony here is said to be only around 25 dB of operation at full power output, which is rather quiet. In fact, last year's 7 series projector was surprisingly quiet given the big laser engine it has, the intercooling. So we're expecting similar things with this unit, though for the best cinemas we still like to see a hush box in operation. How does the Sony install into a room? Like I say, you do need a reasonable throw distance. And in fact, if you can get a 1.4 throw distance ratio, that is the screen width times 1.4 equals where the lens needs to be, then you could have an option for a panamorph lens to go for a full cinemascope aspect ratio and all the video processing required for that is on board the unit. So 1.4 is a pretty generous throw distance. If you're in a shorter room, you're probably not gonna achieve a cinemascope aspect which means that settling for a 16 by 9 is going to be the most common use for this unit, I believe. Installation can be ceiling mount or it can be tabletop because it has a really great amount of lens shift, making it very flexible to get the screen dialed in 
with a bit of a range of heights. So the projector could be high or it could be a little bit further down the wall, which works just fine. To get the most out of really any projection system, specialty calibration will be required. So these are test instruments measuring the light and the color off the screen to ensure that the net result, what the eye sees from the seat is exactly what the studio is intending or at least as close as possible to it. So calibration sets up the widest dynamics, accurate color, and a nice smooth tone of picture throughout. Sony has really great calibration controls internally, which allows calibrators to really get the best picture outcome without the need of extra external video processing. So what other units are available? Well, there's definitely the Epson, the champion of the lower budget projection systems, and they've got the new LS1200, also a laser driven unit claiming around 2,500 lumens, although I find with Epson, by the time we get full color output, maybe the um, dynamic range that we see on the screen isn't quite what the numbers spec. So I'd say I would expect dynamically with a typical colorful picture in action, the 2,000 lumen Sony and the 2,500 Epson's gonna look more close in brightness than the Epson actually having more pop. Now the Epson does not run a true 4K chipset. It runs the 1080p E-Shift concept, which gives the appearance of higher resolution without being the true thoroughbred it could be. At $9,000, it's gonna be really a tie up between, I believe, the lens shift capability of the Epson, whereas the Sony 5000 is fixed, and also the frame rate and some of the gaming features that the Epson offers. Other units out there, of course, is the JVC, the other big Japanese competitor to the Sony. Currently at the same money, the JVC has a little bit less light output and is still a lamp-based projector, but you will gain the lens shift if you want to do some cinemascope tricks to it. Also out later this year is the Sony's big brother, the XW7000 unit, which is very exciting. For the first time, we've seen a projector under $30,000 in home cinema land with over 3,000 lumens of power. It's got over, you've got over 50% more power than this unit. It has a bigger, wider lens, which means you can be able to zoom it into a bigger size screen with even more clarity in the optics. So that big W, eh, sorry, XW. So the big XW7000, we're expecting to be able to light up screens over three meters wide, really starting to challenge some of the more exclusive high-end brands for a massive value proposition. Other than, of course, a fantastic screen, which is really up to the size, the scale, the acoustic transparency, the room conditions, the choice of screen is important, and that's another whole conversation. Once you work that out and get the right sort of screen for your room, then the only other thing to really look at here is maybe something like a video, an external video processor like a Lumigen that does even more advanced color calibration and particularly handles high dynamic range amazingly well. But a Lumigen processor is gonna cost similar money as the Sony 5000 by itself, so it's a pretty serious upgrade. The other option is the Panamore Cinemascope lens, which can convert the units into a cinemascope full pixel arrangement where you can use all the light, all the pixels on a cinemascope screen. That's also similar money as the 5000 itself. So you could supercharge the unit with bolt-ons, though I feel value for money wise, if you can work out your installation and utilize all the features of the projector by itself, your money is going a huge, huge distance. It's the first unit we've seen in Australia. In fact, when we're at the StereoNet show, there was none on show, there was none around. This is the first one we've got, and it's gonna go straight from test, straight to a project, which has been waiting very patiently for its arrival as we've been a few months late. So these global supply issues, and there is a wait list. For those people that feel that it's time to upgrade their projection system, now that the evolutions here, amazing laser high powered projectors, it's taken three, four, five years for this evolution to hit. Performance is on the mark. Now's the time to do it. However, you're gonna have to wait. There's a massive wait list. We're not even guaranteed to know when our next unit's gonna arrive. We're hoping orders are now 
will see units delivered before Christmas. But you know what? It's the same boat for JVC and Epson as well. So guys, if you're really keen to make a huge upgrade, now's an amazing time, but there is a little bit of a wait. I hope this video has been valuable for you. We will follow up and do more when we actually get a chance to fire up and calibrate these units, really see what they're made of, and go a little bit deeper into maybe some of the differences with the competition, though we're expecting the results that all the reviews have already seen, which is an amazing world-class projector at a lower price point than ever before. Thanks for watching. For more inspiration and education, check out our YouTube and website. And remember, with an amazing cinema at home, on any day, reality can go rogue.